Oh, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 56 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about obtaining a strongly typed reference to the previous page when cross-page posting. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 53, 54 and 55 of this video series. In part 55 of this video series, we have discussed the basics of cross-page postback. In that session, if you remember, we had two web forms in an ASP.NET web application project. On web form 1, we have got two text box controls where the user can enter their name and email. Once they click this button, cross-page postback to web form 2, the contents of this web form will be posted to web form 2. And on web form 2, we have got two label controls. And in the code behind, we are actually using this dot page dot previous page property to retrieve the previous page object. And then from the previous page object, we are using the find control method to find the controls there. You know, we had these controls txt name and txt email present on this web form one. From though from those text boxes, we are retrieving the values and then displaying them in these label controls. So as you might expect, if I run this web application project as it stands, whatever values that we type into the text box controls on web form one, and then once we submit those values, we will be able to retrieve and display them on web form two. Currently we are on web form one. I post this to web form two. So on web form two, we are able to retrieve them. And the way we are retrieving them is by using the find control method. Now there's nothing wrong with this, but it could be a little dangerous. Now, for example, let's say I am, you know, when I'm developing this application, instead of typing in the ID of the control as txt name, you know, let me say I had a typo. Instead of txt name, I had txt name one. And now look at this. When I build the solution, the solution builds successfully without any compilation errors. On the status bar, you can see build succeeded. Now we deploy this application to production. Users start using them. And look at this. When I run this application, you know, the web form one loads without any problem. Look at that. Currently we are on web form one dot ASPX. Now I can type, look at this, the application is working fine. But then when I click this button and when the contents of this web form are posted to web form two on web form two, what's going to happen? It's going to, you know, it will successfully typecast the previous page to, you know, page object. And then we are using the find control method. It tries to find a control on the previous page with the txt name one. But on web form one, do, you, do we have any control with that ID? We don't. So obviously that's going to throw, I mean, that's going to, this find control method is going to return null. And then on the null object, we are retrieving the text property. So it's going to throw a null reference exception. And that happens at runtime. OK, so our users will see the application breaking. So when I click this button, as you might expect, we get object reference not set to an instance of an object, which is nothing but a null reference exception. OK, in this session, we will see how to get a strongly typed reference to this previous page object so that we can use properties which can completely eliminate these null reference exceptions. OK, let's see how to do that. Now, to obtain a strongly typed reference to the previous page, there are two very simple steps. The first step is to create public properties. So on Web Form 1, you know, create public properties for those things that you want to expose to Web Form 2. In our case, we want to expose the name and email to the destination page. So I'm going to create public properties for these two, you know, strings, name and email. So let's first do that. So since name is a string, I'm going to create a string property, public string, and I'm going to call that name. And it's enough if we create them as a read-only property because on the destination page, we are just going to read those values. We are not going to alter them in any way. So I am going to have only the get accessor. And here, we are going to return whatever value that is present in the txt name text box. OK, so that's one property. And let's do the same thing for the email public string and that's going to be email and email will be present in txt email text box okay so we have got the two properties that we require the next step is to obtain a strongly typed reference by typecasting 
So what do we mean by that? So on the destination page, look at this. How are we currently getting um, a reference to the previous page using this dot page dot previous page? Or we can also say simply this dot previous page. That will also give the same object back. Okay. Now, but then if you look at the IntelliSense, what it is returning, it is returning a page object back. But we know for Web Form 2, the previous page is going to be Web Form 1. So I can typecast the page object to be Web Form 1 because that's what I'm expecting back. And then declare this object as Web Form 1. Okay, now we know that on Web Form 1 we have these two properties. So instead of using the find control method here, I can directly use on the previous page object, I will now be able to use the name property. And along the same lines, I will be able to use the email property as well. And then all we are doing is setting those strings back to the text of these label controls. Okay, now look at this. If I misspell, you know, by mistake instead of name, I typed name one. Look at that. There is a red squiggly, a compilation error. If I try to build the solution, we get the error straight away at compile time itself. And we have a chance to fix this before we deploy this application to the production site. So our end users will not see those runtime exceptions. So now I can correct this. Okay, so I build this once again, build succeeded, and now once we deploy, our users will be able to access the application. And now there are no chances for runtime exceptions. The name and email properties are always going to be there. So I type in, for example, test here, test here, and click this. As usual, the functionality of the application is the same, except that now we are using a strongly typed reference to the previous web form, to the previous page. Okay, now we have seen how to obtain a strongly typed reference to the previous page by typecasting. There is also another way, you know, by using the previous page type directive. Let's see how to do that. So, now here we are explicitly typecasting. So let me not do that. So if I don't typecast, look at that. This dot previous page property, what is it returning? It is returning a page object back. And then obviously, you know, page object cannot be assigned to a variable of type web form one. So we have that error. We'll correct that just in a bit. But now let us see how to obtain a strongly typed reference to web form two, web form one on this web form two. And to do that, we can use the previous page type directive. So flip to web form two dot ASPX and then flip to the source mode. In the HTML, just like how we have the page directive here, we can have a previous page type directive. So angle bracket percentage at, and then there is a directive, as you can see here, previous page type directive. So I'm gonna select that, and then you need to specify one attribute, which is nothing but the virtual path. So what's the virtual path, you know, of the previous page. Here the virtual path is going to be web form one. So it's equal to, it's going to be web form one. That's it. And now look at that. Once I save everything here, now that compilation error is gone away. Now when I move my mouse over to this previous page property, look at that, web form two dot previous page property, it is returning us web form one. And look at that, it says web form two dot previous page. So on this web form two, the previous page property is returning web form one. And we have web form one variable and everything works fine. So now if I run this, actually, let's go to web form one. And then I type the values, test and test, I click the functionality is going to be the same, except that now we are using the previous page type directive. And one important thing to keep in mind here is this dot previous page returns web form one as expected, or you can simply say previous page, which also returns web form one. But if you say this dot page dot previous page, oops, Let's get rid of that one there, the extra previous page. Now look at this. 
this dot page dot previous page what is that property returning that property is returning the page object back and it makes sense because this dot page is nothing but it is referring to the base page class look at that this web form 2 is inheriting from the base page class so when you say this dot page dot previous page you are actually asking the previous page of the base page now, the previous page of the base page is always going to be the page object, but you want the previous page of this web form too, in which case you can either say this dot previous page or simply previous page. At that point, it gives you the correct previous web form, which is nothing but web form one. Okay. So in this session, we have seen how to obtain a strongly typed reference. There are two simple steps. The first step is to create public properties, and we can obtain a strongly typed reference either by typecasting or by using the previous page type directive. And the advantage of using a strongly typed reference is that you know um, it's going to avoid these runtime uh, null reference exceptions. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.